How's it going, everyone? Most Americans have become concerned about the country's declining birth rate, but there are divides between Republicans and Democrats and between men and women with regards to how concerned they are. That said, there is also some interesting agreement, and some of these divides may seem paradoxical but actually make a lot of sense. So let's get into it. So this comes from a Newsweek article. More than half of Americans are now worried about the declining birth rate. Some 53% of people surveyed in a recent Pew Research Center poll said fewer people not having children would negatively impact the United States. This is probably a typo. They probably mean fewer people having children would negatively impact the United States because that's what concern about a declining birth rate is. And that's up six percentage points from the previous year. Now, six might not seem like a lot, but 53 minus six is 47, which is a minority. So from the previous year, you had a minority of Americans concerned, but now you have a majority of Americans concerned, and that's a significant change. Now, why it matters. The United States is experiencing a sustained drop in its fertility rate, which is the average number of children a woman bears in her lifetime and it has fallen below so-called replacement levels necessary to maintain current population numbers without immigration. Now, the Congressional Budget Office now projects the U.S. fertility rate will average 1.6 births per woman over the next three decades. So this is a projection. They don't know exactly what it's going to be, but based on current data, they're expecting it'll average to be about 1.6 births per woman for the next 30 years, which is approximately a generation. And that is well short of the 2.1 rate, which is needed for a stable population. Now, the replacement rate 2.1 is actually the average number of births that a woman has to have so that each woman has on average one daughter, which reaches her fertile years. Okay, now why that specific calculation? Well, because women are the ones giving birth. So replacement rate asks, okay, how many babies need to be born per woman on average so that the next generation has the same number of females reaching reproductive years as the previous generation did, okay? Now, why is it 2.1? Well, where the two comes from is the fact that about half the population is female. So if half the population gives birth to two children, one half times two is one, and you have the next generation the same size as the previous generation. Now, where does the point one come from? Actually, from two main reasons. One of the reasons is naturally there's actually a little bit more boys born than girls. So if each woman were to give birth to two children, you'd actually have a little bit more boys than girls in that next generation, which means you'd have less girls than the number of women giving birth to all those children. The other reason is that not all children make it to their reproductive years. So you actually need a little bit more than two births on average per woman for the next generation to have the same number as the previous generation. So that's why it's 2.1 instead of two. So experts warn that this demographic shift will contribute to an aging population, shrink the workforce, and strain public programs designed to support seniors. Okay, so if there's less babies in future generations, then there's less workers in future generations, but the larger number of older people from past generations are eventually going to retire. They're going to need pensions. They're going to need other support. So you have a small workforce supporting a aging, not working population. So that's the concern being talked about here. Now, earlier in the article, they mentioned immigration, that immigration can make up for less babies born. That's only a temporary solution because you have immigrants come, work, but eventually those immigrants, now citizens, are going to retire as well. So where are you going to get the funds to pay for the pensions for for those newly retired workers. Well, okay, if more immigrants come, okay, well, they're eventually going to retire as well. And where are you going to find money to pay for that? So it's only a temporary solution. And eventually the birth rate would have to go back up to avoid a potential labor shortage. Now, here's where we see some interesting divides. 
men are more likely than women to be concerned about birth rate. You have 59% of men concerned and 48% of women concerned. But it's not entirely accurate to say that most men are concerned and most women are not. Because 59% is substantially more than 50%, whereas 48% is pretty close to 50 These polls typically have a margin of error of approximately 2%. So 48% of women concerned means approximately half of women are concerned, right? It could be anywhere from 46 to 50%. It's approximately half. Whereas 59% of men concerned means it's a clear majority. It's, it's most men are concerned, whereas approximately half of the female population is concerned. Now, there's also a partisan divide. 63% of Republicans or GOP-leaning people see the declining birth rates as negative compared to 44% of Democrats. Now, 44 is substantially lower than 50%, so it is fair to say that most Democrats are not concerned, whereas most Republicans are, but you do see there is a difference with regards to how far we are from 50% here. 63% is almost two-thirds of Republicans are concerned about the declining fertility rate, whereas Democrats... 44% are concerned, that's actually getting closer to 50%. So it's not really accurate to say Democrats are not concerned or most Democrats are not concerned could be misleading because you have almost half of Democrats who are concerned about this. Now it becomes even more clear when you look at the historical trend. So this is actually the, the Pew uh, website right here, which shows the details. So you see among Republicans compared to the previous year, concern has gone up from 60 to 63. People who don't really care one way or another has gone down from 25 to 20. And actually people who see a declining birth rate as positive has gone up 14 to 17, which is uh, seems to go against the rest of the trend. But look what's going on among Democrats. Democrats are also becoming more concerned, okay? It went up from 37% to now 44% of Democrats are concerned about the declining birth rate. And the percent that see it as not negative or positive went down from 35% to 32. And people who see it as positive also went down from 27 to 23 so yes, Republicans are more concerned about it than Democrats, but all across the board, uh, Republicans and Democrats are becoming more concerned about the low birth rate with time. Now, take a look at these two maps. This is a map of the fertility rate across the United States. The darker colors have a lower fertility rate and the lighter colors have a higher fertility rate. Which places stand out as exceptionally low fertility rate? Well, you have the West Coast, you have Colorado and New Mexico, you have Illinois, and you have the Northeast. Now take a look at this map. These are the results from the previous election. What do you see about these regions? The West Coast, Colorado, New Mexico, Illinois, the Northeast, these stand out as more Democrat areas. So the more Democrat areas are also, they tend to be the areas with a lower fertility rate. And those are the areas, well, because they're Democrat areas, they tend to be the areas where people are less concerned about the fertility rate. Now, at first, this might come as a surprise. Well, wouldn't the places with lower fertility rate be more concerned about the fertility rate? It seems paradoxical. But from another point of view, it actually makes perfect sense. People who are more interested in having babies would have more babies and would be more concerned about a low fertility rate. Whereas people who are less interested in having babies would have less babies, and they would also be less concerned about a fertility rate. So if we take this map here as a map to estimate, you know, blue regions, people would be less concerned about fertility rate based on Democrats being less concerned than Republicans. Red regions, people would be more concerned about fertility rate because Republicans tend to be more concerned about it than Democrats. Well, then it, it makes perfect sense, right? The places where people are less concerned, it means they're just less interested in having babies. So they have less babies, right? 
places where people are more concerned, well, they're just more interested in having babies, so they have more babies. It actually makes perfect sense. Now, here's where we actually see some agreement. Despite these worries, most Americans do not think federal intervention should play a strong role in encouraging families to have more children. Only 32% say the government should get involved, while 56% oppose federal encouragement. Now, this is probably something where Democrats and Republicans would agree. Republicans tend to oppose government intervention in most things, so it's not surprising that they would also oppose government intervention here. Democrats are more mixed in terms of their ideas about government intervention, but when it comes to people's reproduction, then Democrats tend to be very opposed to government intervention, so it makes sense that Democrats and Republicans would actually agree here. Among those who support intervention, the most favored ideas include expanding tax credits for parents, requiring paid family leave, providing free child care, and insurance coverage for fertility treatments. Okay, so these are all financial forms of intervention. Now, in the next paragraph, we actually see the margin of error is 1.4 percentage points, which is pretty close to two, which is what we were approximating there when we said 48% is pretty much 50%. Now, this comes as President Donald Trump's administration has made the birth rate one of its priorities. It has explored giving women a baby bonus of $5,000, while lawmakers have also looked at making childbirth free for privately insured families. And this is interesting, tying states' transportation funding to their birth and marriage rates. Now, this is not only financial support, okay? Yes, you're taking funding to a state and tying it to the state's birth and marriage rates, but how that state boosts its birth and marriage rates, well, who knows? It might be financial, it might be not. You're just incentivizing the states to do something to boost birth and marriage rates, and that incentive is financial, but how the states actually boost their birth and marriage rates, it might not be financial. And look, we don't just have birth rates, but marriage rates as well, because it's very likely that marriage rates have to do with birth rates. People are not only having less children on average, they're also getting married later, and they're starting to have children later, which means they can't have as much children if they start later. So it's interesting that marriage rates are tied in here. Now, next paragraph, multiple factors are cited for the declining birth rate. Now, we talked about a uh, later average age of marriage, namely financial challenges and major cultural shifts. Now, here's the thing with financial challenges. What other studies have shown is that giving financial incentive for people to have children can be effective for those who have already decided to have children, or they already have children and they are deciding whether to have more. But for those who have not yet decided that they want to have children, financial incentives tend to have a not as, as strong an effect, okay? Suggesting that the effect is more of a cultural shift. People being less interested in having children, people getting married later for whatever reason, and hence they're more comfortable having children later rather than earlier, people staying in school longer and feeling like they have to have children after they finish school, these kinds of shifts is probably the bigger effect on the declining fertility rate. And take a look at this map here. This is the global fertility rate. And the pink is 1 to 1.9, which is below the 2.1 replacement rate. Uh, red is even lower than that. And different shades of blue are different levels of uh, being above 2 as the fertility rate. And what you see is that wealthier countries actually tend to have a lower fertility rate. So it doesn't really make sense that finances are the main reason why people tend to be having less children than previous generations. Because you have wealthier countries having less children. It doesn't mean it's not a reason, it just means it's probably not the main reason. So we have the major worry about this type of aging society is that there will be far fewer future workers to support a senior population, either through government programs like pensions or healthcare. Now, this we mentioned before, right? You have less babies, means in the future you'll have less workers, but you still have a lot of older people from the previous generations and they need to be supported through pensions and other care. 
Now, one thing mentioned when it comes to uh, the reason people may be having less children is that with pensions being paid to older people, people no longer need to have children in order to be supported by someone when they get older. Now, that's a miscalculation because where are the pension funds coming from? From taxpayers. Who are the taxpayers? The children of the retired people. Okay, so people still need to have children in order to be supported as they get older. On top of that, children support their older parents directly as well, not just the, the government providing support. But it it's just a indirect support through the government. The money goes from the taxpayers to the government and then to the people getting pensions, but the taxpayers are who? The, the, the children of the retired people. The more children people have, the more funding there is for pensions programs, right? Now, small workforce devoting a lot of funding to an aging population means not as much funding for the younger population, the children. And that's something mentioned here too. A primary risk as population ages is underinvestment in children, right? If you have a large aging population that a lot of funds are going to from a smaller limited workforce because of a low fertility rate, well, then there's less funding left to go to the children who are growing up to be the next generation. So that could be a concern as well. That said, there are mitigating factors, for example, with technological advancement, maybe not as much labor will be needed, and so a smaller workforce might not be as concerning. It doesn't change the fact of, of population decline, it just changes uh, the, the concern for a smaller labor force, but you're still going to have population decline, which can still be concerning for other reasons. The debate over America's birth rate is likely to intensify as demographic trends age the country and challenge economic assumptions. And it's interesting that we do actually see a growing agreement between Republicans and Democrats. Even though, again, Democrat support is below 50%, it is in the upward direction. And considering the demographic trends we see over here, we see that the people less concerned about the fertility rate are probably going to be a smaller share of future generations, which means the future generations will be even more concerned about fertility rate, but are also more likely to have a higher fertility rate. Experts broadly agree that there is no easy fix. Research shows that even family-friendly policies such as paid leave and subsidized childcare have produced mixed results in reversing falling birth rates in other countries. Okay, so again, finances is part of the story, but it seems like there is a stronger other influence reducing the birth rate. Immigration emerges as one potential tool for stabilizing the population, but advocates also urge more support for families seeking their desired number of children. Again, immigration is just a temporary fix because immigrants are also going to retire eventually and you still need more young people. So I hope you enjoyed that and until next time.